Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all doing great. Welcome to the first session of your financial management paper. Now, before I introduce the paper, allow me to very briefly introduce myself. I am Shilpi Jain. I'm a qualified ACCA. I did my ACCA back in 2009 from the UK. And ever since then, I've been involved with ACCA and corporate trainings and have been teaching for ACCA subjects for the last six years now. I also head the ACCA division at VG Learning Destination. So if you have any issues regarding anything with respect to your ACCA journey, if your main counselor, your one point of contact is not able to resolve it, then you know whom to reach out to. Okay, so that was about myself. Very quickly, let me introduce the paper as well now. But before I actually introduce the paper, let me, you know, because this is the first session for our financial management journey, let me very briefly try to understand your journey with ACCA as well. So for how many of you, this is the first ACCA paper. And for how many of you, you have already like done one, at least one ACCA paper. So you know, the kind of rigor that ACCA exams actually have. You know, that will help me in understanding what is your uh, level of understanding of the ACCA, overall ACCA journey so far. So very quickly in the chat box, please, I want everybody to put in if this is their first ACCA exam or you've had, you know, one previous paper of ACCA already done with you. Okay. Can't hear. Oh, I'm sure now everybody can hear me, right? Okay, so Ishita says first exam. Nikhar says first exam. Tejas says first exam. Bhupesh says first exam. Manisha second. Shivang first. Artha first, 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 first. Oh my Lord. Okay, so Navneet second paper. Aditya first. Lakshme first. Okay, so Chahit has done with her knowledge level and she's now on to her skills level. Okay, wonderful. Sonali second. I've cleared F1 to F5 and waiting for results. Okay, wonderful. So I see that it's a mixed um, crowd that we have here. It's a mixed uh, set of students that we have here. Some of you have had the flavor of what the ACC exam, you know, is like, what the rigor of the ACC exam is like. And for the others, this is going to be a completely new experience. And believe you me, when I say that ACCA exams are a completely new experience for everyone, you will believe me when I will show you the kind of exam, the kind of exam pattern, the kind of rigor of the exam as and when we, you know, progress in our journey together. Okay. So for those of you who are giving this as the first paper of their ACCA journey, let me just very quickly give you a word of caution, please. Why? Because although ACC provides you know, complete flexibility in terms of how you can structure your ACC exams, which paper you can give first, what paper you can choose later, among the, uh, you know, among the level of the exam itself. However, there's a reason why some exams are, you know, uh, it's like F4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this paper goes last in the list of your skills exam. Why do you think so? That it has been placed like it's the F9 paper. After this paper, you are technically and as per ACCA required to appear for your professional level papers. Because it will require some level of understanding of the remaining papers before you actually launch into FM. So... At the onset, even though ACCA allows you to choose any paper, um, my personal recommendation to students is not to go in for FM as their first paper because you really don't know and you probably don't have that set of you know, um, pre-knowledge or you can say brought forward knowledge that an ACCA exam requires. So again, I'm, I'm giving you a word of caution if you want to change the subject and probably go in for another subject to choose from the skills level. We're only on the first lecture. It's a good thing to do. However, if you reckon you will be able to manage with your broad forward knowledge, you will be able to put in a lot of extra effort that will be required for you to appear for your AC, first ACCA paper being the FM paper. Then 
I can assure you that I will give more than my 100% to make sure that you are exam ready. But yes, some additional homework and practice will be required from your end. Why? Because this is this has been strategically placed right before the professional level papers and after all other skills paper, right? So it's like building on knowledge coming in from your FR, basic knowledge like ratio analysis, basic knowledge like understanding of you know numbers is what is going to be expected from you as broad forward knowledge i will not be teaching you how to calculate basic ratios why because this is something which you should have already done at your knowledge level and that's why you're now at your skills level so if anybody is like unsure of these basics it's a good thing to opt for another paper and then probably come back to fm or if you want to start with FM, please do this, you know, start with this little bit of broad forward knowledge homework, which is required for your FM paper. I'm not trying to intimidate anybody of you here, but yes, it's important to understand where we are going and what we are heading into, right? And what kind of uh, homework or what kind of rigor are you going to expect in the exam? Okay, so Yash says I've cleared F1 to F5, F7 is pending. FM require knowledge of tax and audit? No. FM does require some bit of knowledge of taxation, which is going to be covered as part of your um, uh, balancing allowance. But don't worry, I'll be covering that part because most of the students do get exemption in F6 because of their base tax paper. So I, I, I do actually cover that topic comprehensively in the class. So don't worry about it. If you've done F7, you've done your basics, F1 to F4, you're there already. You know you need not change your subject, Yash. Child says, which subject to go in for? Uh, we'll go, uh, we'll go with the FR in December, if not FMS. These will be my first skills level paper. Um. Shahid, I would very strongly recommend you to not go in for any other paper apart from um, FR. Because FR is going to take a good three months for you to prepare in itself. So do, do not club it with any other paper. Start studying towards FR and, you know, uh, prepare for one paper. Can I appear for FM and FR simultaneously? No, you cannot. Acer is the name. So I don't know your name. But uh, no, I, ACC doesn't prohibit you from appearing for more than one paper together. But... Um, these two, these two FR and FM are very strong papers. They require a lot of effort. And if you're not doing anything else, like you're 100% full-time, only a dedicated student, you don't have, have office work, you don't have any other qualification that you're studying for, only then you can probably aim for two papers. But if not, then you should only choose one paper to begin with, please. What should be the first paper? Uh, you can choose... PM as a first paper, you can choose AA as your first paper. These are two good options or even FR because FR is base IFRS knowledge. So it kinds of grooms the student to prepare for their further ACC exam. So these are good combination of papers. Um, you're a full-time student only, Chahit. So um, start with FR and FM. Don't get too overwhelmed. See if you're able to manage both the subjects. And before the time you actually book your exam, that is the time where you need to take a call whether you will be able to manage both the exams together or not. But start with two. That is not a problem then. Right? You've still got another month to book your exam. So you will be in a much better position by the end of the month before you know you have to actually book your exam. Right, Chai? Wonderful. Any other queries, guys? Any other basic level queries? Because I understand a lot of you are appearing for the ACC exam for the first time. And this is like probably your first class ever. So I understand some of these queries can be generic as well. I had my last qualification was PGDM in 2009. So the, uh, there is a gap since then. What should be the subject selection one after another in skill level? Rupesh, it's a very good idea to stick to the level which ACC has actually made. So start with your law paper if you're not exempted for it. Then go in for your PM, which is more of more of costing. Then go in for your audit, go in for your FR, go in for your uh, taxation, sorry, and then audit and then FM. There's a, there's a reason why the, you know these papers have been structured or uh, the chronology of the ACC qualification is made in this way. 
What is the best combination with FR? You can definitely go in for double A. Double A and FM together for first time. Again, Aditya, I think I've already just addressed that query. Um, please don't go in for more than one paper. I'm only trying to help you here. Why? Because ACC exams are, uh, you know, the level of the exam is difficult. This is your first ACC exam. The exams are expensive exams also. The examination piece is going to be somewhere around 10,000. I don't want you to be, you know, um, kind of struggling at the end of uh, the quarter and uh, wasting money, time, energy. And more importantly, if you don't pass, there's a lack of motivation in the students, right? You tend to get demotivated. I don't want that to happen. For the first ACC exam, I always just recommend the students to go in for one paper only. So that you understand, okay, this is what the ACC qualification exams are going to look like. It's going to be a computer-based exam. I'm pretty sure you guys have never appeared for a computer-based exam. You've never appeared for an exam that matches the rigor of the ACC exams also. So please, you know, grab, grab things slowly and gradually, one at a time at least to begin with. And then once one paper is done, you know, you're confident, you know, you've done it and you know it probably for the next quarter, you can club more than one paper. Uh, best combination with FM. There is no combination with FM ACER, so only FM. Piyush, can you mention the papers here in that order? So the, the, uh, the paper order is what ACCA has structured the exams in. Going for F4, F5, F6, 7, 8, 9. So what do these 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 stand for? 4 is your law exam. 5 is your PM exam, which is more of costing. 6 is your audit. Um, sorry, 6 is your taxation. 7 is your FR, which is financial reporting. 8 is your um, audit paper. And then you have your uh, FM paper, which is last in the chronological order of your FM. Right? I am going for exemptions. So what is the first exam that I going to go for? Archana, how many exemptions have you got? How many papers in the skills level you have to appear for? I have given a law exam in skill level. FM will be second. Uh, you can see. So some level of ACC exams you, you've already tried and done with. So um, the name says here iPhone. So you can try. I will show you the kind of exam pattern that FM actually has. And then you can be your best judge, really. Right? There's no stopping you guys. I'm only trying to, you know, tell you that this ideally should not be the first ACC exam that you're appearing for. Um, there is an option, Shivang. Shivang, you can definitely go in for the pre-recorded classes. Or you can opt in for double A as well. Double A is going on live. PM and FR, both classes are available on a pre-recorded mode. And... Um, I uh, know these classes, there is going to be 100% trainer support, peer support in terms of WhatsApp group to be provided to you. So all of that is going to be there. Don't worry about it. Right? I'm also got some exemptions. Please suggest which paper should I go for. This is my second exam and I'm working. So how much time will I give you? So Manisha, if you're working, this is your second exam. 100% you have to devote yourself to studying FM rigorously. Just follow the routine which I am telling you. See, there's no stopping you guys to go in for the FM class as your first paper also. I am there to support you 100%. My only point here was not to intimidate you from any point of time, but just telling you that this is a difficult exam. So for the next three months, you have to be live here with me in every class you have to do the homework which I am giving to you. You have to come back to me with queries. And if you stay there rigorously with me for the next three months, you will pass your exam. But then, yes, that devotion has to come from you, right? That dedication has to come from you. That I will be there in the class live. I will ask queries. I will do my homework. If ma'am has given me five questions for homework, I will complete those five questions before I attend the next class. Why? Because if you keep on, you know, uh, prolonging stuff and if you keep on uh, issuing it for a later time, but okay, I'll do it next week. That next week is never going to come. The syllabus for FM is vast. It's a vast, vast paper. I will show you. I will introduce the paper to you right now. And then you will know that, yes, it is going to require a lot of hard work from your end as well. Right? 
uh, Reji has basic ratios and stuff. Hard for me to attend this first paper. No, if you know your basics, that's all I'm asking you to do. You should know your basic stuff. You should not be like completely blank and you, you know, you don't even know what basic ratios stand for. If you know that, you can start with this paper. No problem at all. I'm lacking in presenting my answers. How can I improve that? Because I heard that skills level paper except law or mix of objective and subjective. Absolutely, yes, Chahit. Financial management paper to begin with because that is what I'm teaching here right now, is going to be a lot of theory asked. So even though, you know, when we think of financial management, we think of numbers, we think of calculations. Yes, that is going to be there, but there is going to be a lot of narrative questions that are going to be tested as well. Part C, so there are three parts of the question, three parts of the exam itself. I will just show it to you. Okay, just give me a moment. Let me just present my screen. So I can basically take you through what the exam is going to be like. Just give me a moment. Let me present my screen. So for everyone who is beginning this as their first paper, just be with me. Just follow what I am saying. saying. All I All request I you to do. Okay, I'm just going to present my screen now. Uh, I would request everybody else to be on mute, please. So that everybody is able to hear me. If you all start talking, then nobody will be able to hear me. Uh, which one is the toughest, PM or FM, if we compare? FM, FM is definitely tougher. Okay, from which study material you will teach? Okay, so uh, just to answer Yash's query. Just let me open up my screen first. So that something is there on the screen while we like we are on the subject there, right? Okay. So um in June 2023, Ju uh, sorry, July 2023, ACC has launched its own study material, which is available to all of you free of any cost from your my ACC account. So all of you can access the subject material. The practice kit, uh, you know, the, the practice questions, there are quizzes, there are flashcards. It's a very good, it's a very handy uh, study support resource which ACCA has prepared for its students and it's absolutely free for you. However, that is something that I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, take as base for my class. I'm going to teach from the study material of ACCA itself. However, exam practice, question practice. I am going to take it up from BPP's practice and revision kit. Why? Because it has got a set of questions which have been tested over the last couple of years. So it's very much exam standard practice that we will be doing after the end of every, um, you can say, you know, part of the syllabus. So there are various parts. I will just take you through. And after that, we will be referring to the BPP books. So I would very strongly advise each one of you to please go ahead and purchase the BPP books as well. You can reach out to the team at VG Learning to avail for these books. In case you don't want to avail these books, I will be showing you the ebook on the screen, but that will not be like 100%, right? Because I will be giving you some additional questions for practice at home as well. And each and every question from the practice and revision kit has to be done by you. It's, it's a mandatory thing for you, right? So, like I said, it's a difficult exam, but I can assure that you will pass your exam if you listen to what I'm saying, if you follow my instructions, if you are religious in doing your homework, in studying simultaneously after the class, that, okay, this is the topic that we've covered today in the class. Let me go back and revise that. So, you know, that is something that is really, really, you know, needed by all of you. Right? Um, it's a very subjective question, Yash. I, I cannot say that Study Hub is better or worse. Study Hub is a very good resource is what I can say. But you definitely need BPP books to accompany and do your question practice. Right? 
that is something which is important for all of you we will be covering up our chapters from your uh, study hub textbook so from your ebook of the study hub itself but for question practice i will be you know reaching out to your bpp kids again why so because i know for a fact that these these questions on the bpp kit are very exhaustive if you've done each and every question thoroughly from your bpp kit you will be there you will be you know you your mind will be conditioned you will be able to appear for the exam no 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 you cannot take out prints please that is the copyright of uh, BP, uh, bpp you can buy a physical book right so i will be telling you uh, okay let me just put it down for everyone reach out to sandeep at vg learning i am just providing the number for you to be able to purchase your bpp kit from uh, vg learning he will be able to provide you at a discounted price i will be using and doing questions from this apart from your study hub so we will be mixing the best of both worlds really uh yes you can go in for the ebook as well if you are comfortable in doing questions uh, over the computer it's absolutely fine you should can opt for that option also uh i probably am a little old school so i like the physical book in my hand and you know ticking and making my notes but if you are comfortable using the ebook there's absolutely no stopping you do we need to practice with pen and paper as exams are online that's a very good question there asa please change your name from your computer to whatever your name is actual name is uh, but absolutely no pen and paper from today up till the day of the exam absolutely zero practice is going to be done on pen and paper you will only be opening up your uh, blank worksheets from your practice platform See that's the thing. You are appearing for the ACC exam for the first time, so there's so much that I need to tell you, because you are not familiar with any of the tools that uh, ACC provides to you. But don't worry, I will be showing you each and every tool where we are going to practice, how we are going to practice. So just uh, breathe, be there, and just trust me now, right? Follow me and trust me. That's all I really want to say to you. uh the bpp ebook will be provided by the institute for free uh, no it is not provided for free the ebook which acc provides to you that is free but uh, for the bpp book here uh, there is a price that uh, the gld also obviously pays to bpp the vendor so it's not for free where can we get the worksheet ma'am is it excel uh tejas so just give me 5 minutes i will show it to you it is not excel it is it is a platform like excel will we be reading the theory again should we do it from bpp also along with acc study text absolutely yes child so um, what i will do guys um, i will show you so like here these are my notes which i have similarly i prepared notes for every chapter i will be providing these notes to you as part of your backup however i will not be teaching from my notes this time why because the acc has launched its study hub but it's entirely your choice i will show you both both sets ready if you want me to teach from the acc study hub textbook i'll teach from that textbook but if you reckon that you are more comfortable in studying from my notes which i have prepared i am happy to teach from them as well i have it ready for absolutely uh you can say you know all the topics does pm have more practical part or fm all acc papers are going to be a mix of your numbers with theory it's not an out and out like a number numerical question it's not an out and out uh, uh, theory paper right so it's going to be mix these notes are from bpp these notes are from bpp which i have picked up and you know prepared in ppt formats right yash these are my notes not bpp notes but they are exhaustive i have covered everything which is there in the syllabus it's just to make it more you know uh, professional that i have laid it out in the form of a ppt presentation 
So what we will do, I will take a poll in terms of what do you want me to take up. I will show you both. We are doing it from the books or doing it from the notes. And then you can take a call from where you want me to teach, really. Uh, yes, VG Learning, you can take the um, books from VG Learning where you can buy it from there. Uh, knowledge of first skills, LFM. Okay, so you were exempted from the first four papers and exempted from F4 and F6 as well. Okay, so that's the case. A lot of students come via the exemptions route. Um, ideally, you should start with the AA as your first paper and not FM. Um, and you can, I mean, really, you know, it, it's so difficult for me to say because you don't, ha uh, you have your basic knowledge of ratios and all, so that will be good enough. But you really will have to be there with me in the class. You really will be required to do 100% of what I'm asking you to do in the class, right? Okay, Piyush, is that okay? Stick around for a couple of classes. You will understand whether you know, you uh, do you think you have that base level understanding which is required for FM or not, right? Okay, so now I think we've covered a lot. What I'm going to do now is um, introduce the subject to you. But before that, let me take you through some of the resources which ACCA provides. Just give me a second. Because I think this was one of the questions which was asked. So I'm just going to show you an FM exam. So this is again another platform which is available to you free of any cost from ACCA. You can Access it from your My ACCA account. It is called your ACCA practice platform. Again, very important resource. So reach out to that. Open up this blank workspace for you to practice questions. Right? How it is, I'm just going to show you one of the past exams for ACCA. Let's have a look at the latest one. Let me show you the latest exam. Take you through what the exam actually looks like. Okay. There we are. This is the actual exam of FM. So this, these sample questions show the likely style of range of exams, which is going to be there. So this is March, June 23 exam. So these are the set of instructions which are common and will be there in your actual exam as well. So I want everybody to please Read these instructions before we actually go forward. Read through this, please. Done reading? Sure, sure. I'll scroll down. Are you not able to see the screen? You can, right? Yeah, yeah. So please continue to read. These are just some basic level of instructions that every ACC exam has. So not just only FM, but every ACC exam has this set, uh, this set of instructions. Let's head on to the second set of instructions. I just want you to quickly read through these ones. So that like at the back of your mind, you know that, okay, this is what I'm preparing for. That's why the first thing I'm showing it before I actually introduce the subject, I'm showing you the actual exam so that you understand this is the rigor of the exam that you are heading into. Hmm. 
done reading guys so yes there is going to be a calculator provided to you in the exam platform itself however you are allowed to carry your physical calculators also also one more thing i want to advise everybody here is that even though acca allows you to you know sit for the exam at home which is called like the remote exam please don't book it please make the effort of going to the center and appearing for your exam because that way is you're not worried about the electricity going the uh, you know the internet connection not being so fine and the exam getting disrupted for no reason at all please go to the center even if you have to travel for you know being at the center make that effort it's an it's an expensive exam that you are booking and plus it's your effort of the last 3 months right i don't want to risk it at any point of time so whenever the exam window opens up for you to book the exam please book your nearest center based exam only okay uh, can you please elaborate a bit on highlight and strike through i will show it to you how it works bupesh no problem which specific calculator is allowed any calculator even scientific calculators are allowed as long as they don't have a memory function uh, there i will uh, in the whatsapp group i will share the picture of the of the calculators that you can buy if someone give exam at home then then can he use physical calculators and papers so a physical calculator yes you can use but physical rough paper no you cannot use at the center you will be given a physical rough paper to use as well obviously that is not going to be you know uh, submitted or tested but at home for your remote exam you cannot use a physical rough paper the only scratch pad is what you can use for your workings that's one more reason why you should book for your exam you know at the center right guys so this scratch pad is what is there which is available i will show you all of these functionalities how they actually you know what they actually how they actually uh, function in the actual exam just read through it once okay with everyone can i scroll to the next set of instructions okay wonderful Okay, let's move to the next one. Another advantage of the copy of the computer-based exam is that yes, you have a copy and paste facility also available to you. Quickly read through all of this. I will show you how these functionalities work as well when I open up the actual exam for you. But just absorb it for now. Need. okay okay just to cover up a few queries in the chat box rafin says he's 
uh, coming a little late. So how many hours do I need to allocate per week outside the class? Asking as I'm working full time and uh, what is the full schedule of the classes? Is it going to continue until right before the exam week? Yes, the classes are going to come, you know, come, include and complete get completed by the end of you can say, uh, you know, nearly towards the end of November because December first week is going to be your exam and the classes are going to happen on every weekend. There might be a few extra classes that I will plug in over the weekdays as well in the evenings because they, there's a lot that needs to be covered and I don't want to rush into my classes. I want my, my students to be like thoroughly prepared for the exam. So yes, there will be a lot of, uh, you know, classes that are going to happen. Apart from that, your own self-study will be as per your homework, which I am allocating to you. Plus, you have to revise what has been covered in the class. So I, outside of the class, you will have to provide at least two hours on a daily basis to revise and finish up what has been done in the class and do your homework as well. Uh, can we use Excel spreadsheet for rough work and switch between tabs? Um, you can use Excel spreadsheet. That's not a problem. But... Um, I would very strongly recommend you to use the blank workspace, which, you know, ACC is providing. It is like in Excel because that will familiarize you more and more with on the actual platform in which you have to give the exam, right? So that would obviously be like any day better for you. Okay, how many classes will we be done with the syllabus? So there will be approximately 22 lectures. Each lecture is about say five hours. So 110 hours of classes is the minimum that will be there. Right? Okay, sorry, there was something more. Will you be teaching us to how to present the answer as well? Yes, absolutely. Yes, Chai, don't worry about that. That's, that's the whole purpose of coming to the class, right? Okay, so let's quickly then move on to the last set of instructions and I will, I will then show you the actual exam as well. Quickly read through it. Okay, just a couple more questions coming in. I won't be able to do weekdays, evening, India time. I live in the UK. How many weekdays class do you reckon will be there in the total? No, just a couple of classes in the weekdays will be there. Else, all weekend classes are going to be there only. Like, you know, if uh, for a particular weekend, I want to complete something before we actually do the class, 
a couple of hours might be pushed in into the weekends. That's it. And if you're comfortable in morning timings, I can take it in the morning also. Like in the uh, usual timing that we are having here. That is also possible. That will depend upon what the majority of the class is saying. So if the extra classes during the weekdays, you want me to take up like this timing only 10.30 to say 1.30 maybe, I'm comfortable with that as well. But that will only be a few couple of, you know, sessions just thrown in, in between, not regular. Okay. Don't we, uh, we don't get marks for the flagged answers, right? No, you get flagging system is for your own uh, reference only. Flagging, you know, you put up a red flag for a particular answer. That means you want to come back and visit that answer again in your review section. It's just for your own uh, help child. You will get marks if it is, if it is the correct answer. Uh, but we'll miss a class. We can get the recordings. Yes, absolutely. 100% backup of all the classes will be provided to you on the LMS. And so just absolutely don't worry about it. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so now are you all excited to see the actual exam, what it actually looks like? Okay, so yes, there are going to be two constructed response questions of 20 marks each. This, that is section C. So you've got the 40 marks to appear for in your section C, which is going to have two constructed response questions. There's a lot of theory that is going to be asked in these constructed response questions for sure. 40 marks in total. All the questions are obviously compulsory. Okay. Yes, we are ready to look at the actual exam. Okay, so this is actually just showing you section C of the exam and not section A and section B. But I will come back to this. Let me open up a question, uh, a paper which is showing you actual section A and section B as well. Because there's no point looking at an incomplete um, paper. Just going to open up this practice paper for you. This is going to have all section A, B, C. So this is just the set of things that we've just gone through. So I'm just scrolling it past. Obviously, we will not be doing the exam, but I just want you to have a look at, you know, what the exam actually looks like. So yes, section A is going to have 15 questions of two marks each and these are going to be objective test questions so that's a total of 30 marks in your section a section b is going to have three over ot questions which is going to have each of these questions is going to have two questions like five questions of two marks each so like that is another 10 mark three questions of 10 marks each totaling up to 30 marks in total and section C is going to have two constructed response questions, each containing a scenario which relates to one or more requirements. And it's going to be 40 marks in all. So let's quickly have a look at what, you know, the actual exam looks like in all three sections. Navneet says, I have office timings as per Singapore. Please try to get classes after 6 p.m. in weekdays. In how many days can we get access to the recorded classes? Okay, so... One student is sitting in the UK, one is sitting in Singapore. We will try to manage what suits the majority of the class. We are not taking any extra classes as of now. So please don't start worrying about it right now. It's okay. Breathe. The classes are scheduled for weekends only. A couple of sessions I will schedule in the weekdays as per the class majority. And that too, not just, you know, like straight away. That is not going to happen. Don't worry about it. How many days we can get access to the recorded classes? So the IT team usually takes about uh, two to three working days for the backup to be ready. So if the classes are happening on Saturdays and Sundays, uh, Wednesday is a good time to expect the classes to be uploaded on your LMS. Right? Wonderful. Okay. So let's have a look at typical section A requirements. What kind of questions are going to be there? 15 objective test questions of two marks each worth 30 together. Okay, so this is what typical questions look like. 
Let me show you some of the functionality. So a highlight is basically like this. So I want to highlight that it is about a just-in-time inventory management. So I highlight it. I can choose colors of my highlight. Okay, this I reckon is something which is probably not needed. So I want to cut off. I want to strike through, strike through. So somebody had asked me to show how, how these options actually look like. This is what it looks like, right? Calculator. You will be having this calculator on your exam. But by all means, I would request you to please carry your physical calculators as well. So this mode, you can switch between a standard calculator or a scientific calculator, depending on what you want to do. But again, like I said, please buy physical calculators. Then this is the scratch pad, which is like an on digital uh, rough paper for you to work upon, do your calculations. But it's not Excel, so it will not solve for you automatically. But yes, you can do your answer planning, your, you know, your uh, scenario planning here, basically. Anything that you write on the scratch pad or your physical rough papers will not be marked by the examiner. It will not even be submitted to the examiner. So please do not expect any marks to be given for anything that you have done on your scratch pad. It's only for you to do your rough work. Okay with everyone? Are these basic Basic functionalities, okay with everyone? Wonderful. And also, guys, being the first session of the FM class itself, there's something that I want to make clear is that if you if you're not able to understand anything, please drop in the chat box for me to repeat it so that I know for sure that all of you there in the class are 100% on a topic. Do not hesitate in asking your doubts. Do not hesitate in asking me to repeat something. Do not hesitate in asking me to further elaborate something if you're not clear with it. The whole purpose of coming through to the class is your understanding of the topic, right? And I will not move forward till 100% of you are, you know, able to absorb 100% of what I'm saying. Yes, so strike through is just to cut it. That This is something that I don't want to look at or don't want to, you know, uh, this is not like relevant. Don't do anything. Let it be there. That's all you're working on. You just don't undo anything. You don't have to waste time undoing anything. Right, Piyush? Okay. Any other questions so far, guys? Any doubts you have? I'm just showing you the actual exam, what it looks like, so that you know, uh, you know what we are heading into and how you need to devote time, energy, effort for the next three months to be able to appear and pass for your FM exam. That is the most important thing. I want everybody to pass the FM exam and you will. I can guarantee you that if you listen and follow what I'm saying in the classes, right? Okay. Uh, so just uh, something that you have to, you know, mark and go ahead. I'm just like, choosing random options because obviously we don't know. So something too, we have to mark. Don't judge me. I'm just only showing you questions here. So something that we have to write down. Okay, so it, the question categorically asks you to write down the answer to two decimal places. If I just only write down say 65, let's see what it shows. It actually prompts you that the input does not match the expected format. Why? Because you were asked to write down the answer to two decimal places. And so, you know, it, the system is actually helping you to write your answers in the correct format. Remember, section A and section B is going to be marked by the computer itself. No physical examiner is going to check it. The computer itself is going to mark you for your section A and section B questions. So your answers have to be banged on. 
no you cannot op open up your excel sheet for calculation you can only use your calculator here there you are use your calculator or your scratch pad or your physical rough paper if you're appearing for the exam at the center these are the two calculator options standard calculator as well as scientific calculator both is available Yes, yes, that's right, child. It's pretty much like your knowledge level exams. It's ACCA, you know, exams are progressive. It uh, uh, you know, grabs information in the first go and then like levels you up to the next level, basically. Okay. Um, the question is not there, so I'm just going to leave it. Just showing you the kind of... Uh, questions that can be asked. So different kind of response options are also going to be tested. Switching between window is allowed. Yes, absolutely switching between window is allowed. In ACC exams, something like SBL, your professional level paper, which again I teach, is going to require a lot of switching between windows. But for something like FM, you really will not be, uh, you know, switching windows much because the question and the format is pretty much there on the same window right but yes for an exam like your from your, for your professional level exams definitely you will be required to do a lot of switching between windows as well okay, so i'm just choosing some random answers because we're not solving questions here i'm just showing you the kind of questions that can be asked so true false select out of the option fill in the mars you know to two decimal places. So filling in, doing some calculations and putting in the answers will also be tested. Choosing between some options will be tested. Again, for out of the four options, you have to choose one option or two options, something that the question is going to ask you to do. Again, there's a question and you have to choose the correct option. So very much an objective test question, right? What I'm going to do now is hop on to section b question and show you the kind of section b questions that are going to be there okay so it's not letting me switch as of now because i've probably not opened up so this is a typical section b question the question is going to be there on the left hand side of the screen like this so you can scroll down the question up and down here you can also navigate the size of the question so like between the window. So this is something that you can maneuver as per what you want or move left and right to read the entire question. And then the question, the first question out of the five questions on this section B, first question is going to be on your right hand side. So this scenario on the left followed by five different two mark questions on the right. So I'm just showing it to you so again the same question on the left followed by a new question on the right same question on the left followed by a new question on the right so there are going to be five two mark questions for every section b questions and there are going to be three such questions okay with everyone does everybody understand section b kind of questions again the same set of question here on the left with a new question on the right Left, same question, new question on the right. And five questions done, the question on your left changes with a new set of five questions on the right. Okay with everyone? Not solving anything as of now. I'm just only showing you what the actual exam looks like. Is this okay with everyone? Any doubts, please feel free to ask. take you through a typical section C exam as well now. Okay, let's go through this. So I'm going to the navigator and opening up a section C question. Okay. So now what do I have here? Obviously section C is going to be constructed response questions. As expected, you have got a set of Excel-like spreadsheet opened up on your right to do your calculations. So the question is there on the left. 
you see here the question. This question is followed by a first part of the question where you're required to calculate the market value VAC for Gardner Company. And what do you have here? You have an Excel-like spreadsheet to do your calculations upon. You can change the size of your rows and columns. You can make use of the, okay, I'm just gonna show you some of the functionalities. So Gardner Company, he bold this name, let me probably italicize or underline something that I want to highlight. All these functionalities available, I want to change the font size, I can do that. All of these functionality is available. I want to write down something and I want to change the decimal places of it. I can do that as well. I want to calculate percentage. I want to write down symbols. All of these are basic functionality which is available. Now, that is what a typical Section C question looks like. This is what your cell like spreadsheet is going to look like. Okay with everyone? Yes, absolutely. So basic formulas like uh, uh, some can be used. You can use formulas like NPV and IRR here. I will show it to you when we actually come to that topic. But yes, basic formulas can be used. Excel shortcuts will not use because this is not an Excel. Some basic Excel formulas you will be able to use which list, the list of which is going to be given to you. Don't worry, I will take you through. I will show you everything. Don't worry about it. All of it will be given to you as to how you're using what, right? So each one of these tabs, you have to sit down and explore that is why we say that, you know, it's uh, it's a good idea to have a familiarity of what the uh, ACC exams look like. Because this is something that, again, is there for you to be able to do in your exam. Again, some of these functionality is available to you, which you can use here. Right? All of this is there. And I will be showing you the help sheet and the formula sheet which you are going to provide. Will mouse be provided at exam centers? Yes, mouse is provided at the exam centers. Okay, let me take you through another question now. Okay, so now this question here, obviously on the left remains the same. And in the part B of the same question, you are asked to explain the meaning of the terms business risk and your financial risks. Obviously, it's a theory question and as expected what have you been given you've been given a word like document to prepare your answer so here what you can do is business risk you write blah 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 about it you put on the next topic financial risk you write blah 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 about it i'm just showing you how to use some of the functionality in the exam, right? All of these features, functionality is for you to use in the exam piece. You can bold, you can, you know, make use of some of these functionalities. You need not use all of this if you are not required to, but yes, if you want to, this is what is available to you, right? So this is what you can make use of if you want to, you know, present your answers in this word-like document. Do we have topic-wise practicing material from VGLD to prepare topic-wise? Yes, Piyush, I will be taking you through topic-wise, like we will be completing one chapter, one uh, like syllabus area and doing the practice for it topic-wise itself. Because there's no point rushing to the next topic till we are actually done with question practice for one topic itself. If the computer is marking session A and B, round of the decimals will be, uh, then it will be wrong. Then yes, absolutely. So you have to be very careful if the computer is asking you to write down your answers to 
two decimal places, you have to do that. Otherwise, it will be marked wrong. And it has to be accurate because the computer is marking it. Right, Lakshmi? Okay, so this is what it is. Let me show you another typical question. Same question on the left and another theory question on the right. So that's what I'm telling you guys. The reason of showing you this in the first place is for you to prepare your mind that FM is not just a number crunching paper. It is going to ask a lot of theory questions as well. So when we are studying the topics, you have to be well versed in terms of how to write and present your answers. Presentation of answers is another skill which is very important in your FM exam. You have to make your answers look beautiful, legible. After this FM paper, the student is ideally expected to start with their professional level papers. So you have to show to the examiner that you are ready for, to take on the professional level. Really, You are ready to take on you know, that big leap from the skills level to the professional level. So yes, presentation of answers is very important in your FM exam. Right? Again, a theory question here. Yeah, I know I've not read through the entire content because I'm not doing the question for now. Okay, so the computer is just trying to help me that, hello, you've not gone through the entire question. Okay, so now the next scenario kicks in for another 20 marks. As expected, there is a numerical question here followed by, okay. Let me just show you the whole of section C. Now this, the second part of your question, again, some numbers to be done. So you've been given the spreadsheet option here, followed by a theory question, right? Followed by another theory question. So like I said, FM is big on theory is big on the narrative answers. So please, you have to prepare yourself well enough, not just only focusing on numbers, but also on the content that needs to be written. Now, this help and formula sheet is something that all of you need to print. So it's, it's a printable uh, help and formula sheet. It's got three sections here. This set of instructions you've already uh, read, but I want you to take a print out of it these formulas for your FM are going to be provided to you in the exam, which means you need not learn your formulas. But when I say you need not learn your formulas, that doesn't mean that you can just be very you know, casual in your approach. There's a whole list of formulas that will not be given to you also. So you have to learn them. Plus, there will be a list of formulas. This, this list of formulas also doesn't explain what each of these symbols actually stand for. So you've been given here VC, uh, uh, VE, VD, T, Beta. What do these uh, VC, VE stand for is not given, right? So unless you know what it is, how will you be able to apply the formula, even if the formula is given to you? So again, yes, there is a lot of help in the, in the form of answers being, the you know, formulas being provided to you. But then, yes, you need to uh, learn that. Can you send a copy now? Um, I can't because this is not downloadable for me. You have to open up and then you can print it with your systems, right? It's not something that I can save and send to you. Right, Tejas? Uh, okay, so but if the answer was say 2.347, it could be rounded to 2.35 to two, two decimal places. Yes, absolutely. That's a basic rounding of system, right? So anything that goes beyond 0.5 is converted into a one whole number, right? So guys, please look at this. Let me see if I can actually. Yeah, so then this is again some of the question help which is there. All of you have to go through all of this. So word processing questions, spreadsheet questions and commonly used spreadsheet formula. You have to read all, you have to you know take printouts and read all of this please. This is something which will be available to you during your exam also. But during the exam can't be the first time when you're reading all of this because during the exam, you have to do the exam, right? 
not read at these help sections. So please print out these sections and give it a good read. This will only help you prepare for your exam. Right? So please do all of this, guys. Everybody okay with it? So now, after having seen the, uh, you know, the, the exam really, what are your first thoughts on the FM exam? I really want to know. First thoughts, quickly. Do you think it's an easy exam? It's tough. Absolutely. So yes, I want you to be committed to your FM paper from today itself. Today is the first session of your FM class. And you have to be with me. You have to be rigorous for the next three months if your aim is to pass the exam. I am telling you on the first lecture itself, not trying to intimidate you here, but I'm just showing you what the actual exam is going to look like. And if you want to, you know, prepare for it, if you want to pass for it, you have to be there with me. Uh, seems interesting. Very interesting it is. I think it was more practical instead of theory. No, Vineet, please don't get confused by it. Section A and Section B is also going to be a lot of theory concepts being tested. But yes, obviously, there's going to be a lot of numbers involved as well. But do not take theory lightly. Section A, Section B questions also are going to be driven by theory. I've never seen topics like this. and It's going to be challenging. I've just passed my 12th this year. It's totally new. Um, I completely resonate with what you're saying, Chayat. And that's precisely my reason of showing you the kind of rigor that FM exam has in the first lecture itself. So that students can take an honest, um, you know, call as to whether they are, they are prepared for it. They think that they have that no basic knowledge to be able to take it one level up with the classes. Or do they think that, you know, it's better to start from an easier paper first. You've done ratios, capital budgeting, topics like these in my knowledge, knowledge exam. So I'm sure, Chayat, you will be able to do it. Don't worry. But just be there in the class with me. Do what I'm asking you to do. Right? So if you are religious in your study, in your uh, preparation, if you're honest in your preparation, you will pass. But if you feel you take it lightly, if you feel that, you know, um, okay, I'll see it in the next week. I'm busy this weekend. Let me party this weekend. Let me take on other priorities this, this weekday or this weekend. It's going to be difficult. And that's precisely why I'm showing all of this to you in the first lecture itself. Just be honest and sincere to yourself for the next three months. Yes, absolutely. There is a WhatsApp group or often are you, are you not already added? There are um, there should be two groups in which you all should be added. One is um, like a generic VGLD WhatsApp support group and one is a financial management paper support group itself. Okay, so for those of you who are not added to the FM paper uh, WhatsApp group, please reach out to... Okay, let me just show you, uh, give you the number. I don't remember, so let me just see it. Okay, so the personnel that you need to reach out is Goldie. It's 92890-11274, right? So please reach out to Goldie from the team. She will get you added on to the right groups, really. Okay, let's take a quick 20 minutes break. I think I've given a lot to you for you to absorb to begin with. So let's take a quick 20 minutes break and then we shall start at 12.15.
Okay, so do we have everyone back from the break? So now let's start with understanding of the subject. What is it? that we are going to study what financial management is all about, why we are studying this topic in the first place, what is the role of a finance manager in the organization. You know, very typically we say that um, like doctors are very important. They are like, you know, the lifeline of any hospital. Similarly, the accountants of the world, the finance managers of the world are like the lifeline of any organization. You need accountants, you need financial managers to make sure that any business for that matter is able to survive. So when you're studying financial management, you are skilling yourself with a set of uh, skills that you are going to be the financial survivor, the financial doctor of any organization for that matter. So yes, key skills you are going to learn in this one particular paper of ACCA. So what do we have? Aim of the subject is obviously to develop skills and knowledge expected of a finance manager in relation to what? In relation to investment, in relation to financing, in relation to dividend decisions. So I, if I put it in a very layman's language, as a finance manager, you have to think of where to arrange the money from. So, you know, where is the funds going to come from in the first place in the organization then? Second, what are you going to do with these funds? Are you going to, you know, how much are you going to deploy towards your working capital? How much are you going to deploy towards investments? And then once your investments reap in profits, what are you going to do with your profits? Are you going to give them away as dividends? If yes, how much? But are you going to keep it as retained earnings? How much are you, of it are you going to reinvest in newer projects as well? All of that is broadly what the finance manager does in any organization. And thus, all of that is precisely what you're going to study in this particular subject as well. If I talk about linkage, yes, brought forward knowledge from your applied knowledge level. MA paper, that is management accountancy, is pivotal in your FM paper. And one level up in your in your professional level is your AFM paper, which is your advanced financial management, which is an optional paper. You can choose it from among the four options which are available to you. So that is like the overall subject layout. Any doubts in this? Any doubts in this, guys? Or am I good to go ahead? You have to tell me if I'm good to go ahead because that is the only way I will know that whatever I have, you know, uh, said till now, taught till now is understood by the class and I am good to go ahead. And like I said, I will not go ahead till the time I get, you know, I'm, I'm satisfied that yes, everything is understood. Okay, wonderful. So now the ACC examining team expects you to do two things. Perform. That is, do your calculations and don't just stop at doing calculations. You have to comment as well. Very important, like I said, you are the finance manager. You're not a base level accountant here in the class, in the, in the, in the organization. You're not just expected to do some calculations. You're also expected to perform critical abilities demonstrate that you know you have an understanding of the syllabus you are able to fetch information from the question related to the scenario given to you and then give your answers so your constructed response answers are always going to be linked to the scenario you have to add value to your numbers by doing comments on it by making it easier for the CEO and the CFO of the company to make decisions based on what piece of information you have done for them, you have prepared for them, right? Yes, absolutely. It is related to investment banking because you, you are studying as, you know, what are the key aspects of how to make sure that the investment in the organization is heading towards the, you know, in the right manner. Now, ACCA has provided such, such plethora of resources for its students. Let me take you through. It's, okay, let me take you through from the website itself. Okay, what I'm going to do is take you through like I took you through this. So, ACCA global.com.
students, study support resources. Now these resources are again available for all subjects for ACCA, from ACCA, again, free of cost. There is so much that is you know readily available for you. You must avail. So financial management is the paper that, that we are dealing with. Now, this, this, this guidance here, this, this resources here, exam support resources here are extremely important for you to do, go through them each by each one by one, right? So now, if any one of you feels that, you know, you require some help in terms of your maths and English support, language support modules, this is again available from ACCA free of any charge. Please go ahead and do this module as well. Okay. Then we're going to do our study hub is where we're going to do, you know, uh, study for our paper, really effective learning and revision phase for your FM paper is given. You've got given some past exam questions. There is a technical articles is there. Examiner's report is one such tool, which actually I'm just waiting for host rights to be given to me again. So I can start sharing my screen. I've dropped in a message to the IT team. Just give me a moment while I reconnect with them as well again. Okay, so let me check. Not yet. It's the misery of living in a society where light keeps fluctuating. And then you have to wait for like five minutes for the backup to start. Okay, not yet. Meanwhile, if anybody has any doubts, anything you want to ask, please pour in your message in the chat box. So I can answer your queries. Uh, I just created an account on the Student Virtual Learning Center. There are some quizzes also for the skills and professional level papers along with maths and English support. Are they free of cost? On the Virtual Learning Center, uh, yes, you mean the Education Hub, right? All supported, which are all support resources from ACCA, which are there, they are all free of cost. Please log on to it and just, just use them really, right? Okay, I've got my screen sharing rights. Thank you so much, the IT team. I can then go back to the resources which we were discussing. Okay, everybody able to see my screen, right? Okay, wonderful. Uh, please share link for the same. I think I missed it. You mean this link? Let me share it with the in the chat box. So this is again a very very good resource from ACCA, which will guide you towards everything that you have to do towards your FM paper as well, and not just FM for all other ACCA papers as well. Okay, so there is uh, an examiner's report. So after every session. The what what happens basically is that the examiner goes through the exams and sub and publishes a report as to what is it that students had done mostly right what is it that student had you know uh, mostly gotten wrong so it's a feedback directly from the examining team itself so definitely a very good resource for you to look into the exam technique then there are some mock exams and debrief videos we will be going through all of these slowly and gradually as we proceed in our journey for our FM preparation. Very important, pass rates. Typical pass rate for ACCA over the last couple of sessions, if you see, is an average, I would say, 50%. So it means only 50% of the students who appear for the FM exam globally pass the exam. So definitely it's a difficult exam to pass. And I make sure that you are in the 50% of the students who actually pass the exam. To pass the exam, you only need a flat 50 to be able to consider a pass. But to get that 50 at least, you have to do lots of effort at the onset itself. So yes, again, nothing to intimidate you, but just to you know keep the basics right, just to set the tone of uh, what we are heading into correct from the day one itself. Now what I'm going to show to you is just some of the resources which are available. Let me just take you through the study hub, which is the newly launched 
resource from ACCA. It's a very good resource. Let's quickly familiarize ourselves with the study hub as, as you know as well. So let me share the sound and show you this quick video on it. Let's take a closer look inside Study Hub, your ultimate study resource. It's a digital hub. Study Hub gives you online access to study materials from ACCA. It works like an ebook with added interactivity. It's a knowledge hub. Study chapters help to increase your understanding. The IT team has now given me a solution. Hopefully, this should not be happening from the next class. I'll buy some. UPS adapter is asking me to. So just wait for two minutes and the host rights to be given. I'll start sharing my screen then. Such a pain that, you know, light goes for like a minute and it just, internet takes like five minutes to restart. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay, so I have the rights. Let me share this sound again and there we are let's just watch it from the beginning because then it will be good let's take a closer look inside study hub your ultimate study resource it's a digital hub study hub gives you online access to study materials from acca it works like an ebook with added interactivity it's a knowledge hub. Study chapters help to increase your understanding. A visual overview shows all the topics in each chapter, so it's easy to see how they link up. It's a revision hub. End of chapter quizzes put your knowledge to the test. The multiple choice questions are automatically marked so you can review your performance. Flashcards test your knowledge of key definitions. Check your answer against the definition on the reverse of the card. Practice questions help you prepare for your exams. You can instantly compare your answers to the suggested solutions. It's an anywhere hub. Whenever and wherever you want to work, Study Hub is there on web and mobile. It's a success hub. 79% of students said Study Hub made them more confident. 90% said they would use Study Hub again. Use Study Hub to help boost your progression. Just go to your My ACCA account and click on the Study Hub link. Okay, so yes, that's another very useful tool from ACCA. Apart from, you know, many other tools that ACCA provides to us to help us prepare for the exam. Now, the exam, I think we've already covered this. All questions are going to be compulsory, mix of computational as well as discursive elements. Some questions are going to adopt a scenario-based or a case study-based approach, as we call it. CBE exam, it's a computer-based exam of three hours only. You'll be given 15 minutes for reading and planning. The skills that you require, obviously brought forward knowledge from your MA paper. You have to make clear workings, logical structures, because you earn marks as you go through your, you know, your workings, really. Interpret data, you don't just calculate and just sit there. No, you have to talk about these numbers also. You have to interpret what the data also means. Explain management accounting techniques as well as discuss their application to the question and apply skills in a practical manner is what is required. So right, like I said, some basic broad forward MA knowledge or ratio knowledge, basically, if you have, then you can definitely appear for your FM paper. Uh, clear working means that when you are you know, making your workings, your layout in your uh, calculations, in your Excel spreadsheet, in your spreadsheet formulas has to be clear. Not the uh, scratch pad workings we mean. We mean calculations that where is the number coming from. It has to be clear to the examiner, right? Make working notes on the spreadsheet itself. I will show you. I will teach you the skill when we come to you know question practice. Right, Piyush? Sorry. 
What does clear working mean? I will show to you. Okay. Syllabus areas. There are, um, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven syllabus areas. Why I've written them jumbled up and down is in order of what is the most important syllabus area. D, which is investment appraisal. You can expect questions in section A, section B, section C from this topic. Part C, working capital management. Again, expect, question, expect questions in section A, section B, section C type of questions. Business finance, the same. Business valuation, the same. Risk management, the same. Part A and part B of the syllabus is what you expect. Generally, questions coming in section A and section B of the syllabus, which means all the syllabus, the entire syllabus is extremely important. You cannot pick and choose your study syllabus here. Everything, which means everything has to be done. Bear with me, guys. Right. All the entire syllabus is extremely important because yes, they are going to be tested in your section A, section B, as well as section C questions. Most of the section C questions we see coming in from part D, C, E, F, G. But part A and B very rigorously going to be tested in your section A and section B, which makes it equally important that you cannot ignore any part of the syllabus. Why? Because you will be tested in section A and section B as well as section C from throughout the syllabus. No pick and choose your study syllabus here, right? Structure we've done already, section A and B are going to be your section A is your objective test questions of 30 marks. I've shown this to you also, so I can skip it. And uh, section A and B are going to require, it's going to come from the entire syllabus. Like I said, section A you've already seen is going to be MCQ kind of questions, objective test questions. So how do you basically, you know, what approach do you basically handle for your MCQ questions? The question is there, there is one correct answer or maximum two correct answers and all other options are distractors. Distractors are plausible answers, but they are incorrect answers. Why they are called distractors is because they are there to distract you. What you have to do as a student is not get distracted and be able to identify the correct answer, right? Obviously, that only comes with question practice. There is no shortcut to it. Section C can be asked from anywhere across the syllabus, going to be a mix of numbers as well as theory. I've already seen, shown it to you. Expect questions from parts C, D, and E there. You are going to be provided with formula sheet as well as some tables of discounted annuity factors. What they are, where they are going to be used, I'm going to tell you when the syllabus area comes in. But yes, you can, you know, you should know these things that you can bring in a scientific calculator. You will be provided with a with few formulas on the formula sheet, but you need to interpret those formulas. Discount tables and annual tables will obviously be provided to you. In allocation. Uh, for those of you who have already appeared for an ACC exam, do you think, tell them that, you know, I want you to tell the rest of the class that do you think the ACC exams are time crunching exams? Did you feel the pressure of running out of time for your exam? Tell me, please, those of you who have appeared for a skills level exam previously, tell me, did you feel the pressure? Did you feel that, like, you know, okay, oh my God, I'm running out of time? You did not. Child, you've not done, uh, you've only done the knowledge level, right? I'm talking about the skills level papers. Yes, there is a clock ticking and it's extremely time crunching. So what you have to do to make sure, yes, so that, that's why you did not feel the time crunch, right? Because knowledge level are simple, like, you know, building blocks towards your skill level papers. But skill level is going to be one hell of a paper. Time management is extremely important. Yes, Siyash, absolutely right. If you do not complete the paper, you only you know, make yourself a lesser probability to pass the paper. So getting 50 out of 100 marks, if you've attempted for the entire 100 marks, your probability is a flat 
50%, right? Isn't it? So you know that you've attempted 100 marks out of it and you need to get 50 marks out of it. So your probability of getting that is flat 50. However, if you only appear for say 80 marks paper, you need to now get 50 marks out of your 80 marks that you've attempted. So that pressure of getting that 50 to pass is obviously higher. We will make sure that you do not end up in a position where you're not able to devote enough time to every section. Simple formula for you to do that is just remember that it's a hundred marks that you have to appear for in three hours, which means you've got 360. Uh, sorry, you've got how much? You've got 60 into 3, 180 minutes to appear for uh, this 100 marks. So, which means 1.8 minutes per mark is what you have to allocate. For a two mark question, you're not going to spend anything beyond three minutes and, you know, a quarter of uh, like a three minutes, uh, like three minutes is what you're going to spend maximum on it. 3.6 is like the, the stretches time that you can spend on it. For a 10 mark question, no more than 18 minutes to be spent. For a total, section A has got 15 uh, objective test questions of two marks each, which means you have to wind it up maximum in 54 minutes and move to section B. If you're not doing that, if you're, you know, you're stretching your time on section A and section B, you will not have ample of time to do your section C. And that section C is going to require absolutely more time. Each 20 mark questions is going to, you know, you have to devote at least 36 minutes on it. So which means you have to spend 36 plus 36, 72 minutes out of the total money, 80 minutes for you for your exam purely all section C. And having said that, section A and section B are the easiest marks to, you know, to gain. You don't want to lose these easy marks. So please make sure that you are dividing your time section by section. Do not overrun on anything. Remember this flag facility by which I had shown you? So if you're running out of time, you need to come back to this question, just put up a flag on it. You put up a flag on it, you can come back to it later. I'll show it to you how. Let me go back to the question. Okay, let me just go to the navigator. Uh, well, let's open up question four. Okay, let me navigate through this sheet. Go to the navigator, open up question four. Okay, Baba, I'll navigate through the entire screen. It's thinking that I've probably not read the entire question, so it's not allowing me to change gears. Okay, I am just going to question number 12, which is your section A question. The question is there. I, I don't know the answer of. I, I cannot, you know, or I want to revise it further. Just put up this flag for review. Press on this right flag on the right of your question go to the next. Now what happens when I am navigating my questions, I see that I have red flagged the question and I can go back to it. So this review, this navigator is going to be very helpful for me to go, go back to questions which I probably left when I was, you know, attempting that part of the question and I want to revisit that question. So total exam given for the exam is two hours. No, no, it's three hours. It's a three hour exam, three hours multiplied by 60. You've got 180 minutes to do your exam. Right, Rupesh? Okay, so let's hop on to most important question that I get asked is We've done our time management, how to pass. Everybody wants to pass here, right? That's why you are here. That's why you're taking up this paper. Our ultimate agenda for taking up these classes is to pass the paper. So please get these basic things in your mind. You have to understand theory. You should be able to apply all the formulas. Very important for you to interpret the requirement of the question. What is it that the examiner has asked you to do? 
practice exam questions in a timed environment, which means do mock exams before your exams. Give yourself three hours like the actual exam. You will know where you are before preparing for the exam itself. Very important for you to give yourself a mock exam. At least three to four mock exams is what you have to appear for before you actually head out to your actual exam. This uh, this link I've already shared with you, which is the link for your practice platform. You can directly click it also. You can directly reach out to it also from your uh, ACCA accounts. And this is what I want you to quickly have a look at now. Let me just quickly show this to you share this link with you as well and show it to you as well. In this video, we aim to provide you with all the information you need to get exam day ready, from effective time management to tips on how to organize your answers. Before exam day, there are lots of useful tools to support you during the exam. There's a navigator tool to track your progress and allow you to jump to any question within the exam. The ability to flag questions you want to revisit and an on-screen timer to help you manage your time. We encourage you to use these and all other resources available to you on the ACCA website. You can learn about any functionality in our CBE guide whilst exam specific videos highlight key functionality aspects that will help you in each exam. You can even practice answering questions in the specimen and past CBE exams provided for each subject. Exam day preparation. Once you've entered for the exam, you will need your examination attendance docket. This is downloadable three weeks before your first exam and we'll email you when it's ready. It contains the address of the exam center and your exam's timetable. Familiarize yourself with the location of your exam center and the journey to it. Aim to arrive at least 45 minutes before the exam start time, as unlike paper-based exams, you need to go through a check-in process and be allocated a workstation. We use your docket to verify your attendance, so make sure you bring it with you and keep it on your desk for the exam supervisor to collect. If it's your last exam, the supervisor will keep the docket. Otherwise, it will be returned to you for future exams. Your docket also contains important exam regulations and guidelines. Take the time to familiarize yourself with them. You also need to bring a photographic ID to each exam to confirm your identity. Your workstation. Once the invigilator has started the exam, You'll have up to 10 minutes to read through the instructions which outline the functionality and format of the exam. Any queries, put up your hand and the invigilator will come to you. You can start answering questions at any point during these 10 minutes. However, once you've started, you'll have 3 hours and 20 minutes to complete the exam. There's no time to be gained by starting before the end of the 10 minutes, so no need to rush. We encourage you to use the full 10 minutes to read the instructions. You'll be provided with scrap paper to make any rough notes or workings on. However, only answers and workings entered in the answer spaces within your CBE will be submitted for marking. Your exam will automatically end once the time counts down to zero, or if you choose to end the exam early. Even if you do finish the exam early, you will still have to wait in the exam room till the end of the allotted time. Don't forget to look out for the exam rules and regulations that regularly appear in the notice board section of Student Accountant. How to make points and present answers. It seems obvious, but answers must be appropriate to the question in terms of form, length and depth. If a question requires a list or a brief description, then using bullet points or brief points would be suitable. If an explanation is required, then fuller answers should be given. If a question asks for analysis or evaluation, then make sure your points are logical, relevant and coherent. 
allowing you to gain the additional marks available. Set out your answers so that the marker can clearly see the points being made. We won't penalise you for poor grammar or style as long as points can be understood. However, by making points succinctly, you'll also earn marks more quickly and efficiently. Within the word processing space, think about presenting narrative answers in a structured way. You could utilise the table feature or insert breaks and headings to break up long paragraphs. Don't use over-elaborate formatting tools. Remember, you're awarded marks on the content of your answer and not the layout. In spreadsheet answers, the markers will be able to see whatever you've entered into a cell, such as a formula or reference. You should also make sure that you include some words in your answers to label the steps in your answer, so the marker can follow through your method. Managing your time. Effective time management is vital. Running out of time means lost marks. It's a good idea to divide the time allowed by the marks available. In the session CBEs, this works out at 1.8 minutes per mark. You should stick to this allocation throughout the exam. So, spend 54 minutes on a 30 mark OT section and 18 minutes on a 10 mark OT case question. Also, try not to rush through the objective test questions. Take time to read them carefully. Don't waste time by spending too long on one question, over explaining an answer, or correcting a mistake which means you have to also correct all following on figures. Avoid these issues by only correcting a calculation if it's quick to do so. We use a method or own figure marking policy. This means you only lose marks for the initial error, not the subsequent figures, as long as the marker can follow your workings. Remember, the marker can see everything in a spreadsheet, including any formulae in cells. Only making as many points as there are marks available. If there are only five marks available, don't make ten points. If you are struggling to get to grips with a question, use the flag tool so you can use the navigation screen to return to it later after you've tackled the rest of the questions. As you can see, there's a lot to think about. That's why preparation is essential. For more advice, visit guidance from the examining team in the resource finder on the ACCA website. Plan ahead, get organized, and best of luck in your exams from all of us at ACCA. Wonderful. So that was just, you know, the top tips for you to absorb before we actually head for the real exam. I think we covered most of the pointers here. Do we do, uh, do we get step marking if couldn't complete the whole question? Yes, you get step marking as well. And also, like the video just shown that you uh, you also earn, there's no, there's an own figure rule that ACC follows, which means supposedly you were calculating the NPV and one part of the calculation you got wrong. Based on that one part, that one figure, which was which is initially wrong, you've made the rest of the remaining calculations. So mark for it will be deducted only once where you got that one figure wrong. Thereafter, if your workings based on that wrong figure are correct, the steps are correct, you will still gain marks out of it. Right? There is no partial marking. Partial marking means what? In your section A and section B, you either earn a zero or you earn full marks. There is no partial marking, yes. Okay. So quick tips for you to read to before you know what is it going to be that, you know, what is it that your exam is going to require you to pass your exam. Early. Quickly read through this, please. I have explained everything. But I just want you to like quickly uh, revise. Partial marking means that uh, supposedly it's a two marker question for in your section A question, but you've got um, say about um, like half of it correct and half of it wrong. So there were two uh, you know options that you had to select. So there is no one mark that gets allotted to either you get a zero or you get a two. There is no like you cannot earn one mark in it, right? That's what partial marking means. 
you have to get both the options correct. So the full answer has to be correct in order to get a full mark. In section A and section B, it's only going to be your full marks that are going to be granted to you or yeah, yeah only for MCQs. In your section C, which is your constructed response, obviously you will get partial marks, which means that you get your marks as you basically earn through it. Rule of elimination means, Rupesh, if you're just completely blank about a question that has been asked to you, it's an MCQ question. Let's start eliminating the options which you are sure that is not the right answer. So eliminate those first. Then probably out of the four options, you're left with two options. And you, you have no clue about what is, you know, what is like the, the right way to do it. So what you do is then your best choice would be to go into the option that you think is the correct option, right? Yes, Sukhminda, you will earn marks for every correct step. Anything else, guys? Quickly read through it. Okay, computer-based exam obviously is going to require you to have certain set of skills which are going to be required for you to clear your computer-based exam. Very important is you for you to label and cross-reference your workings. You need to do calculations which are easy for the examiner to follow. I just told that you earn marks for every right step. Make it worthy that the examiner is able to give you marks. You know, do show your calculations. Don't just write figures, which the examiner has no clue about where it's come from. Write down a figure, reference it with working one, cross-reference where your working one is, show the examiner how you, you know, derived at this answer step by step, following clear and sensible layouts, using formulas, writing, you know, comments about what is it that you interpret from these figures that you have just calculated, right? Obviously, all of this will be taught to you in the exam. I'm just head, you know, putting it down for you to make notes of that. What are the key skills that you need to learn during the classes? Because this is what is going to give you an edge over the others, right? Just put down some top tips section wise as well. I want you to read through these top tips, please. These are just generic tips which I'm giving to you. Obviously, how to use it, how to interpret it is something that we will read through and gain experience of as we do our classes, as we do our question practice. Obviously, section A can be asked from absolutely anywhere across the syllabus. Not get distracted by the distractors. There is no negative marking. So worst case scenario, you don't know anything about the question. Give it your best shot. Go by the rule of elimination and choose the answer which you think is the right answer. Probably you're not, you're not sure, but there is no going to be no negative marking, right? So don't leave any question unattended is what I mean. Read the questions very, very carefully. There would be questions that would be asking you to select more than one option. So if you don't select more than one option, you will not gain a mark. So if two options are required, two answers are correct, please, you know, you have to select both the correct options to be able to get full marks. Option B, obviously you have to read through the scenario and the important, you know, signpost coming in from there, followed by five questions on your right, each question is independent. So, you know, tackle each question separately. One part of the question, if you don't know completely, you can still attempt the others. Read the additional information very, very carefully. No shortcut to success here. You have to work very, very hard. You have to do lots and lots of question practice. In questions where we need to select two options, if we select one right, do we get partial marks? No, you don't, Piyush. It, ha it has to be two options to be selected and you have to select both the options correct. Okay. Section C, narrative, which means theory, very important. 
definition, explanation, discussion, you definitely have to, you know, focus a lot from your theory, from working capital topics, investment appraisal topics, as well as business finance. Will there be connection made with practical scenario in your concept teaching as you would help to understand the concepts? Absolutely, yes. That's the whole point of coming to the class, Rupesh. Don't worry about it. Okay, so key message to students. This key message is not from me. This key message is right from the examining team. So please read through it and then I will explain to you each one of these key messages one by one. Okay, so yes, you absolutely have to address the requirement. If you're not answering to the question, you will not get marks. It's as simple as that. Please use the cell formula correctly, which means make sure that if you are like adding A12, uh, A23, this is what you were required to do. These are simple mistakes that students sometimes make because of lack of practice on spreadsheet. Present the spreadsheets as professionally as you would present it to your CEO, CFO in the organization. You are, you know, put yourself in the shoes of an actual finance manager working for XYZ company and then present your answers. Do not write answers like a student. Like I said, FM paper is the bridge between your skills level and your professional level. So you are expected to be, to show the examiner that you are ready to take on the professional life of an ACCA. So please present your answers accordingly. How does it help in career if someone does specialization in FM in final level? Well, Rupesh, that's a generic question, but definitely you are open to all the, you know, uh, business level and finance level roles in the organizations then because you've literally done the advanced level of financial management as well. So it's like a specialized, uh, you know, uh, qualification that you have. your word process responses guided by the requirement both in terms of content as well as the detail like in the video we had seen if it's a five marker question write down decent five points enough to be able to give you five marks no need to go blah 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 making unnecessary 10 points no need but yes five good qualitative answers like a header briefly explained with the, with the help of a short paragraph again the second header 
short paragraph to explain it again a header so five headers with five short paragraphs will get you five marks as long as obviously these five headers and pointers make sense right a list of short bullet points is not a discussion so if the examiner is asking you to do discussion you have to discuss discuss both pros as well as cons of the aspect these key verbs which the you know the requirement of the question addresses is extremely important for you to to gauge what the examiner wants you to do this again will again come from question practice there are some recommended technical articles on these topics where to get them everything i will tell you so don't worry about it okay so that was your introduction <clears throat> about your financial management paper any queries guys anything you want to ask so far we've not started with our syllabus as yet because i wanted to give you good time to absorb and understand what is it that you are heading into for the next 3 months really any questions guys okay what about others also it's a good time for me to ask your feedback also if there's anything in the way i teach in the way i explain you want me to change i can definitely be there there are many chapters just don't worry i will open up your study hub and show it to you so there are seven seven sections that i just resonated for you okay chahit thank you so much anything else guys any i'm always open to feedback and uh, the end point of every session is that you should understand so i'm always there to help yes class duration will always be 5 hours but i will give you sufficient time to breathe and eat so we going to break for lunch now and we will what is we only prepare from your notes what if we only prepare from your notes no you cannot just only rely on the notes the notes are there for you to help and support you have to look at additional question practice each and every question from your bpp practice and revision kit has to be done each and every question from your study hub has to be done mock exams from your practice uh, platform has to be done notes are there to you know explain the concepts to you but yes practice question practice is what is like the most important thing um rupesh says bpp books are must or acc study material is enough well ideally acc study material is enough it's got the textbook it's got some questions for you to practice taking up bpp kit no sukhwinder bpp ebooks you will not get for free you have to purchase them from vgld if you want i can share the link of the contact person again acca study material is printable no it's not it's an online tool uh i would very strongly recommend to buy your bpp practice and revision kits please because that is what i will be using in the class so it will be a good idea for you and me to be on the same page right reach out to sandeep for uh, any help you need on physical books on e books he is the guy for you he will provide you okay so let's quickly break for lunch till 2 pm and then we shall start with the class again okay so i hope everybody is back from the break what i'm going to do now is open up the acca study hub let me just put in my password so i can then share my screen again
screen is visible. So you have access to this study hub from your My ACC account. FM is what we are studying. Getting my access to it. Okay. So this is your study text from ACCA for your financial management paper. Let's start with the first chapter, the introductory section. This particular section you can read on your own because I've already covered it in the session that we had done prior to the break. Okay. So the first chapter talks about the financial management function itself. Let's quickly have a look at the chapter overview to look at what is it that we are heading into. So we will begin with the role of the financial management. We'll begin with the objectives and the strategy that you know why and what this financial manager is actually expected to do. What do we understand by the term conflicts of interest and all the requisite knowledge on it? Okay. So what do you understand by the term financial management? Any idea? What do you think? What do you understand from the term financial management? Tell me. So what are you looking at? I already had given you a brief on what financial management is all about, right? Looking at and managing what? Managing all the activities which undertake companies financial management of money. Yes, so where the money is going to come from, where it is going to be invested and with your investments, what are you going to do with your returns as well? So everything that has got to do with the management of activity created with efficient acquisition as well as the use of short and long-term financial resources is going to be covered under the gamut of financial management. Now, when we say financial management, definitely the finance manager is talking about three major roles. Financing, where is it coming from? Investing as well as dividend policy. So the key roles are these three. That every finance manager is looking at. And this is the definition for your reference. I'm just for the book. I'm just going to quickly underline and highlight the key aspects of it. So definitely when we're talking about all the aspects of where the money is coming from, which means you have to decide between the various sources available, right? Equity or debt is where you should be looking at. You have to talk about the source of funds as well. Where are you going to arrange these funds from? Are you going into the, you know, arrange funds from the stock market? Are you going to arrange funds from the private money lenders? Are you going to your bank to arrange for these funds? So all of that is, again, something that you have to decide upon. Once the funds have been arranged, you have to obviously think about what to do with these funds. So where to invest, how much to invest, what are the possible projects which are going to give us good returns, where we should actually invest as well. Then you have to talk about the dividend aspects of it as well and how much you need to you know, put across as working capital, you know, retain it in the organization itself. And then very important for the finance manager is to talk about the aspects of risk. You cannot take risks which are beyond the risk appetite of the organization as well. So yes, you have to talk about these things. You have to look at these aspects from a financial manager perspective. Now, when I say these three decisions which you are taking as a finance manager, which is talking about in financing, investing and dividends, definitely these are interrelated. Why? Because if you are investing in uh, projects, then you probably have a lesser amount to give away as dividends as well. So you have to talk about the fact that how much are you retaining, how much are you reinvesting, how much are you paying back. All of these decisions are going to be interrelated decisions. Right? Absolutely. 
uh, Aditya, it's from your my ACC account. Your access to your study hub will be given to you from your my ACC account. This this access which I have is my trainer access. Right, Aditya? So just log on to your my ACC account. And under your account, you will be able to see the link to open up your study hub. You open up your link for your specific exam, which is your financial management paper. Right, Aditya? Okay. So yes, that is the entire broad purpose and nature of it. Now, when I talk about that, when I say that, you know, there's a lot of prerequisite or pre-brought forward knowledge, which is going to be there. Absolutely. So you should be able to, you know, uh, get the base concepts of your FA paper as well as your MA paper. Why? Because you as a finance manager will be, you know, that is like base level knowledge, which you are going to further work upon in your FM exam. And that is where, you know, why that is where and why I say that that broad forward knowledge of basic accounting, of basic ratio analysis is something which is extremely important for you to know. You should be, you know, familiar with how to make your cash flows, how to make your budgets, how to make your ratios, how to make your profit and loss statements, how to make your balance sheet. All of this is considered broad forward knowledge, right? Okay, so yes, there is a link between your FA exam as well as your MA brought forward knowledge that you will be required to show in your job as well. Okay, so now let's talk about the concept of strategy. Why do you think we need a strategy in the first place? Let me put it simply for you. Do you think to be able to pass your FM exam, you need a strategy? It, what is it? It's a course of action. Course of action that you need to have in place so that you are able to achieve your ultimate objective, which is passing your FM paper. So yes, that is exactly what a strategy is in an organization as well. You need a strategy to be able to divide, you know, decide a course of action, which is going to help you achieve an objective that you now, this strategy could be a short-term strategy, could be a long-term strategy as well. But yes, it will depend upon the objective. But to be able to achieve those short, medium, long-term goals, you need an action plan. And an action plan is for the strategy which you are going to prepare for yourself. So it's a course of action that you're going to prepare to be able to achieve a certain objective. Now, when I say objectives, there are different kinds of objectives that you will have as an organization. You will have certain corporate level objectives. Ma'am, how the notes thing will take place? Uh, okay, Piyush, let me stop sharing the screen for a minute. I will show you. Actually, before the launch of uh, ACCA Study Hub, I was teaching from my own notes, which I had prepared for my ACCA sessions. Let me show it to you. So for every chapter, I have prepared notes like this, which talk about the main key points for every aspect that we are doing. I will still be providing you with these notes as part of your reference. This will be uploaded on your LMS for you to quickly revise and refer through the, to the entire chapter which is being covered in the textbook as well, right? So everything which we will study will be provided to you as form in the form of these notes as well, right? Where do I see the study material? The study material is available. The study hub is available from your my ACCA account, Yatna. I've already shown that to you from where to access. So log on to your my ACCA account and open up the study hub. Select the subject financial management. Right? All sorted, everyone. Okay, so let's proceed. Okay, so when are we, when we're talking about objectives, what are we talking about? We're talking about objectives 
which are corporate level objectives are obviously the objectives for which the organization stands right that is what the organization is working towards in the long run so your corporate level objectives are going to be relevant to the entire organization it's not a a, a department wise objective it's not a uh, you know, a streamlined objective, a corporate objective is something which is there, which is relevant for the entire organization per se. So yes, that is going to cover your profits, that is going to cover your, uh, you know, your constraints on profits, which is there, you're going to talk about these objectives, which you can broadly classify into profit goals. So these objectives are going to be, what is it that you want to achieve in terms of profits as an organization surrogate profit goals which means what are the aspects that you need to work upon that are going to help you ultimately lead to your main objective which is your profit goal constraints on profits which means what are the forces which are pulling your profits down that is something that you should also be aware of why because you want to eliminate you want to reduce these constraints on profits and there could be some dysfunctional goals as well which are you know which are the objectives that which will not provide a benefit even in the long run but do i need them you have to review those dysfunctional goals as an organization at the corporate level itself just bear with me for a second guys Okay, apologies for that. Right. So yes, you have to talk about it from the perspective of what is it that you want as an organization? What are the main drivers of, you know, of, of the organization? What is it that the organization is working towards? A company may aim to either maximize or satisfying these objectives. Now you have to look at it whether you want to achieve the best possible outcome or do you want to achieve the satisfactory, like, you know, an adequate level of outcome that may be there? Surrogate profit goals. So surrogate profit goals, yes, simply means that objectives which lead indirectly to increased profit. So you, if you have a, a satisfied lot of loyal customers, if you have a satisfied lot of workforce, do you think keeping these as your objectives will indirectly lead to your increase in the profit goals of the organization? Yes or no? Yes, so these are your surrogate profit goals, right? Okay, wonderful. So let's have a look at the next page. Financial objectives. Every organization is working towards what? As an organization, you are looking, the primary goal of any private organization is obviously maximization of shareholders' wealth, right? That is one of the primary financial objectives that the organization has. So let's quickly have a look at this. So one of the primary objectives, a primary financial objective of any organization, any private organization would be to move towards maximization of shareholder wealth. 
Now, how do you see and how do you know what figures do you say to calculate whether this this objective, this financial objective of maximizing shareholder wealth has been met or not? So total shareholder return is what you need to calculate to find out and, you know, to be able to figure out whether this, this, role, this role that we have of maximization of shareholder wealth has been achieved or not. How do you calculate that? There's a formula for it. So this formula is something that you have to learn. Which includes the fact that total shareholder return is equals to what? Your share price at the end of the year minus your share price at the beginning of the year. So, you know, the difference between the end of the year share price minus the share price which was there at the beginning of the year plus any dividends that you've received per share during the year divided by share price at the start of the year multiplied by 100 gives you your total shareholder return. Okay, with everyone, I want you all to quickly have a look at this exercise. This example, basically. Look at this example. Figure out if you are able to identify what was the share price at the end of the year. So by the end of the share, share price, it was X dividend. Remember, it always has to be an X dividend market price. If it's come dividend, you have to remove the amount of dividend from it. So this is my P1 as we call it, which is share price at the end of the year. Then you have share price at the beginning, which is 10 per share given to you. Amount of dividend given is 1.2 per share. And just put everything in the formula given to you and you can easily calculate your total shareholder return. Right? Quickly do this. Quickly calculate your total shareholder return. I want you all to basically do this example yourself first. Share, change in the share price over the year plus dividend divided by share price at the beginning. Yes, absolutely right, Chahit. Quickly have a look at this. See if you are able to pick up the requisite figures. Put it in the formula. Let me open up the formula for you again. There you are. The formula is there. And quickly calculate. Wonderful. Any doubt? Is there anybody who was not able to get the total shareholder return of 41%? Anyone, guys? Wonderful. I want everybody to try this first. It's a simple example. You should all be able to do it. Done. If interim dividend also given, then you do not have to include it. Right? It's always going to be X dividend that you have to include. Okay, everyone. Now, we as an organization, can we just only be focused upon increasing our shareholders' wealth? Do you think, is it the right thing to do? Or there are certain drawbacks of just only focusing on the shareholders' wealth maximization as the only objective that an organization may have? It's, it's not the only objective that you should have, right? It's not the only driving factor that you should have. Why? Because 
the company which provides the highest returns for its investors will obviously you know it's it will grow from that matter so it seems to be the right thing to do really why why do you think you know what are the factors which justify it so let me just highlight the factors that are there to support that the objective of profit maximization is the right thing to do is let's just identify why it is right because if you are able to provide highest return to investors it will be easy for you to find new investors because the investors know that yes your be and satisfied and it's growing every year on year so yes it is something that will help you fuel your future growth as well so from that perspective it's a good thing cross naturally no right you have to have a contented set of contented and loyal set of customers a growing market in which you are operating and that is the only thing which is going to fuel your profits really right so that is something that you have to obviously think of so that is again a, a factor that pushes towards the focus of your shareholder return maximizing your shareholder return then again it is something which you know if you are able to achieve your uh, uh your shareholders objectives you certainly are avoiding a way in which companies may just you know uh, take over you why because you already have a set of investors who are happy with the company they are you know enjoying a good increase in the growth as well so there cannot be any random hostile takeovers from one set of stake you know shareholders that comes across why because the shareholders are already being you know kept satisfied here so they will be no hostile takeovers in this position then directors obviously have a legal duty to run the company on behalf of the shareholders when that happens okay let me introduce this to you what do you think that you know who are the real owners of the company who are the people who actually own the company the shareholders absolutely so when the shareholders are the real owners of the company but who are the people who are actually on a day to day basis managing the organization and taking decisions in the organization it is the directors of the organization so we clearly see that there is a mismatch between ownership and people who are managing the organization so directors they are the acting as agents of the real owners of the organization who are the shareholders of the organization so yes they must they have a legal duty to work towards achievement of what the shareholders what the real owners of the organization expect from the organization and that is maximization of their profits really right so that is why we say that directors have a legal duty to do on behalf of the shareholders as well i think someone wanted me to repeat the third point so let me go back to that so companies that fail to provide adequate returns may become targets for hostile takeover simply means that if as an investor as a shareholder i'm not finding the work the returns that an organization is giving to me satisfactory what is it that i can you know be thinking of either i can you know just sell off my my, my share in the organization and pull off my investment or i can probably expand my expansion my you know my my share holding in the organization make it above 50% to become the majority shareholder and then run the company my way really right so that is exactly what it means so we must make sure that we are keeping our set of shareholders happy and satisfied so that there are no hostile takeovers happening however we all agree that this cannot be the only objective this cannot be the only way that organizations are operating or you know working towards why why because can we just forget the fact that we cannot have you know monopolistic setups we cannot have you know high prices being charged to the consumers only for the sake of earning higher and higher profits that obviously cannot happen so you need to 
take care, acknowledge, appreciate certain social needs of the community at large as well. Social needs like health, like education, like uh, green policies, like environmental, you know, the environmental carbon footprints that you're leaving behind. All of that is something that you must consider as well. Then what about just only shareholders? Why my entire focus is here on only on providing maximum wealth to the shareholder? What about other stakeholders? Can we ignore employees in the organization? Can we ignore customers in the organization? Is it, you know, a good practice to just ignore the society as a whole? No, right? We have to consider, we have to be considerate towards what our responsibility as an organization is towards the overall group of stakeholders and not just the shareholders in the organization. So that is something that you must obviously focus upon as well. In case of unlisted companies, even the shareholders may not be required, uh, may not require maximized returns. Why? Because they might just, you know, go flamboyant in spending their own, um, you know, big fat bonuses, salaries, checks, in uh, personal parties and all. So it all depends upon what is the intention of the management of the shareholders of the organization, if it is an unlisted organization as well. So yes, sometimes you do things out of, you know, trying to create a prestige issue for the organization as well, trying to create a goodwill for the organization as well. So that is again something that you have to look at. So criticism of the above will include the following. So you cannot ignore market imperfections. I'm just highlighting the key points here for you guys. We've already discussed that it ignores social needs like health, uh, education that is required, the overall infrastructure that you know your society might require. You cannot ignore other stakeholders like employees, customers, and in case of unlisted companies, obviously. This, that is not going to be the focus because that might just be a way in which you are maintaining your lifestyle as an organization as well. Fourth point in, so take any unlisted organization and look at the way they are spending their money. Maybe they are indulging into, you know, office getaways or parties. Why? Because they want to build themselves as an organization because that is not the only objective which an unlisted organization might have. Unlisted company means some, an organization which is not listed on the stock exchange. So which means that general people have not, you know, general large public has not invested in the organization. Again, Nikha, this is some of the basic broad forward knowledge that is expected of you in your financial management paper. Is this the first ACC paper that you are doing, Nikha? Yeah, so that's precisely why the, the question, because a lot of, uh, you know, brought forward knowledge in terms of some basic terms and terminology will be expected from you if you are at the FM level. So if this is your first paper, it's a good, uh, you know, time for you to review whether you want to take this up as a first paper or not. Example for the fourth point, you can just simply look at any unlisted organization, any small organization which is not listed on the stock exchange, which is not uh, run, you know, an IPO as yet. And what what is it that they are working towards? The shareholders will obviously be a you know a family, maybe a family or run business. Um, any business that you can compare that is not a listed company, you can think of their because it's a family run business so they might be investing a lot of the family's profits of the business's profits in, in a wedding in the family right because that is what they want to portray that as a business house we are doing good for ourselves right uh, whosoever is in the name of asa got it any small run private business you can think of which is not a public company which is not a listed company right okay everyone quickly grab it quickly uh, read through it again
Okay, so let's continue. Bupesh says, ma'am, under this, under this, even a listed company may have goals like carbon neutral, which may require investments and not suit only profit maximization. Absolutely. That's precisely why we are saying that for a listed organization also, having just one financial objective, which is the maximization of your shareholders' wealth, is not the correct you know, way to proceed as an organization. It's not the only sole objective which an organization can have. Why? Because it's purely something which is going to be like a narrow, you know, that is there. Obviously, every organization needs to work upon the, the ultimate bottom line and shareholders' returns. You have to keep your shareholders, shareholders satisfied. But that cannot be the only objective that you're working towards. Right? Apart from that, obviously, they will be working towards profit maximization as well, which means as an as a private organization, as an organization, I need to work towards the fact that, yes, I have profits in hand. I have to show the fact that profit maximization is, is not just only, you know, you cannot say that uh, if the company has profits, ultimately your shareholders are going to be happy and they, they know they, their wealth is going to maximize. No, these are two separate concepts that you need to understand that, yes, in practice, many companies find the theoretical objective of maximizing shareholders' wealth hard to follow. Why? Because ultimately, you're only driving profits, right? The ultimate focus, which is that you're looking towards maximization for, of profits, why? Because when that happens, your overall stock market, your overall share price is definitely going to increase, right? So that is something that you have to look at. In practice, profit maximization is also often used as a proxy for shareholder wealth maximization. Unfortunately, profit is not necessarily a reliable proxy. Why do you think so? Is profit, you know, looking at profits and trying to focus and on maximization of profits a good objective for an organization to have? Absolutely. No, right? Because why are we just only focusing upon profits? It's a very narrow, a very myopic viewpoint that you can, you know, call it as to be. So definitely the value of the company's equity is more closely connected to its cash generation. So you cannot look at and ignore cash generation rather than accrual-based accounting profits. Why? Because your accrual-based accounting profits might never actually materialize. So look at cash. How much cash is that you've actually got in the organization? Excessive pressure to maximize profits can lead to, I mean, I'm sure everybody understands and, you know, agrees with this, that it can lead to window dressing. It can lead to manipulation of data. It can lead to fraudulent accounting as well because there's so much pressure that increase the bottom line, increase the bottom line. So you're trying to manipulate your accounts in such a way that it shows profits, but it is actually not profitable as an organization accounting profit reports debt financing cost but not equity financing cost now what does that mean any idea so debt financing cost is what the whatever interest i am paying towards the debts which i have collected as a business i am putting that into my accounting systems right however equity financing cost are we you know, uh, putting them, putting that down as an expense in our profit and loss statement? No, right? So we're completely ignoring the equity financing costs. So you have to talk about the fact that how much of it should you actually acknowledge? And you cannot ignore your ultimate required return by the shareholders as well. Not just, you know, have a look at and ignore and, and, and absorb one aspect of it, debt aspect of it, and ignore the equity aspect cost of it. Both come at a cost. One is a direct cost in the form of interest and the other is an indirect form, which is in the form of the required return by the shareholders. Then again, we can be focusing on 
EPS as an objective, earnings per share. What we want to do as a financial objective in the organization is to maximize our earnings per share. Now, what do you mean by earning per share? This is the formula for earning per share. You're talking about PAT, which is your profit after tax, minus any obligation that you have to pay towards your preference dividends, which purely leaves you with the amount of profits which are attributable to your equity shareholders, divided by the number of equity shares that you have in the business. And that gives you an earning per share. Again, broad forward knowledge, you all should be familiar with what EPS is and how it should be calculated. Yes, absolutely right, Tejas. Right? Right. Now, quick exam advice here. In pre if preference shares have been classified as non-current liability, preference dividends would be included in the finance cost and therefore already deducted from profits. So please take a note of it. If it's a non-current liability that they have included the preference dividend, it's do not remove the amount of preference dividends again from it. Right? We, yes, it's FR Yash, that's right. That's why I say that, you know, there's a reason why the chronology of the uh, ACC exams it has been fixed in a certain way because you are expected to do your uh, basic MA, FA, your basic FR, AA before these exams, really. Why do we need to minus preference dividend? Because preference dividend is a liability that you need to pay to your preference shareholders. You have to pay it because it is something that will get preference over your equity shareholders, right? Yes, because they are redeemable preference shares. Yes, absolutely right. Okay. Now, what, I mean, you know, there's so much of focus upon trying to increase the EPS, trying to increase the EPS. Do you think it is something that is a healthy exercise? Or does it actually lead to pressure on the management to, to meet the expectations of the analysts? Absolutely, yes, it leads to added pressures because when that, you know, when the focus is purely on EPS, all of these you know, problems can arise. Why? Because EPS can be cosmetically boosted by undertaking a share consolidation, which simply means you replace your several existing shares with one new share. So issue one new share by combining 10 previous ones. You're reducing your denominator here. You're reducing your number of shares here, your denominator here, to boost your EPS. It's that easy to do window dressing on it, right? So it can be cosmetically boosted. So thus, it is not a reliable or a very healthy financial objective that you should have as an organization. EPS can be legitimately increased through a share buyback scheme also, which means, so this was cosmetic. However, you can genuinely also increase your EPS by buying back your own shares as well. But that does not actually prove that the company has done a whole lot better. It's just that something, you know, it's just an accounting entry that you've made for yourself where you are buying back your own shares, thus reducing the number of shares issued to the market per se. Right? Okay with everyone? Quickly have a look at example two. I want everybody to do this yourself first. It's an example which everybody has to appear for. Please do this example yourself first. Submit your answers.
okay let me address the questions so here in your denominator you have to take the weighted average number of shares that you have this company has got for uh, 400000 shares at the beginning however after 6 months it has issued another 60000 shares so uh, 200000 is what you had as the average for the first 6 months and 460 multiplied by 6 by 12 is your average for the next six months so total average is going to be 430 right absolutely so it's six months 400,000 six months 460 so you have to take your average okay everyone have you all been able to do this so have you all been able to calculate your eps and growth, what about growth also? Nikhil, what do you want me to explain? The weighted average number of shares. So 400,000 was the number of shares for the first six months. So 400,000 into 6 divided by 12, the average is 200,000. For the next six months, your number of shares is 400,000 plus new 60,000 which you've issued. So 460 into 6 by 12, which makes it a total of 232. And a total weighted average of 430. Right, Nika? Is this okay with you, Nika? Chayat has got the correct answer. What about others, guys? Have you all been able to do this? These are simple examples. So that's why I'm not doing it with you. There are examples that you can take up yourself. We will be doing question practice from our BPP practice and revision kit. These are just small examples given by, you know, given in your book itself. Solved examples, basically. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Okay, what I'm going to do now is not proceed with this now because... This is something which I want you to sit down and absorb everything that we've done till now before we have a class tomorrow. So I'm not going to take this not-for-profit organizations topic today. Why? Because uh, why minus one? Okay, let me go back because you have to calculate the growth, Rupesh. How do you calculate growth? You have to reduce it, right, from one to be able to calculate the percentage growth. So this is your increase minus one, one, no problem at all. So what I will do, I will just rest the class here today itself because there's a lot that we've started off with today. There's a lot of information being provided to you. What I want you to do is just open up your study hub today and revise these couple of pages that we've done today. Right, just revise this before we enter into tomorrow's class. And what I want you to do is also take out time and revise your basics, please, guys. Your basics like your PNL, your uh, uh, balance sheet, your ratios, basic interpretation of ratios. All of that is something that you have to do. Time duration of a class. Again, the lecture tomorrow is going to be from ten thirty to three thirty. But I will give you sufficient and ample breaks in between. Don't worry. And I will wind up depending upon uh, where, you know, the chapter is finishing off. You will not get details separately for study hub here. Log on to your my ACC account you have. Shivam, have you been registered in ACC as yet? Okay, so you're not registered. Your Are your documents not complete? Have you sent across your documents to the VG Learning team? Yes, so don't worry. Everything will be done if your documents are completed. Where will I get today's notes? So uh, today's notes, the, the entire lecture notes, which are here in the PPT formats for this chapter, will be provided to you once we are done with the chapter. Right, because we are not teaching from this note. We are studying from our my ACCA account. So this is this is something which is like readily available to you, right? 
एब्सोल्यूटली चाहे देर इज नो स्टॉपिंग यू बट आई विल टेल यू वेन टू स्टार्ट because we literally just started started the lecture today you you will not be able to cover but yes your total shareholder returns your eps the concepts that we've covered today you can do relevant question practice on it no stopping you uh will this lecture be email shared on email no no it will not be shared on email guys you you have your lms access of vg learning right not on your acc login this is from vg learning so please reach out to your uh, vg learning account your lms access so after wednesday you this particular lecture will be edited downloaded up edited and uploaded on the lms pdf of notes which pdf notes do you want uh, yatna this i have already told will be provided once the entire chapter is over this which we are studying from is already available to you on your my acc account right wonderful okay then thank you so much guys and i shall see you tomorrow uh don't start with both levels simultaneously piyush i really request you to do one paper alone or only please don't confuse yourself don't you know jeopardize a lot of things fm certainly no if you're clubbing it one more paper no certainly no right so for tomorrow class you have to study not for profit organizations not no 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 tanya i will be taking it up don't worry for tomorrow's class revise what we have already done right we will not move forward but we will go back and revise what we have done right so you are starting with skill level piyush don't start with fm please start with double a start with double a or pm you can choose one of the two okay okay guys thank you so much i shall see you tomorrow then thank you bye bye